but 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 you also got to look at the academic world. If you don't know, what kind of a professor are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are under pressure, aren't they? Right, that, we're, we're going to look now at uh, some, some of the candidates in a little bit more detail. And as we go down through this list, Wolf and Titilla, what you actually begin to see about those is there's doubts as the, even if these are actual historical figures. There's no documentary evidence. Uh, Woofer, the only reference that I could find to it anyway, is a 13th century chronicler, Roger of Wendover. Um, well, and he said that Woofer reigned from 571 to 578 AD. And that's 700 um, years later, yeah. Yeah, so, um, and if he existed, he, he certainly would have been a, a, a pagan. Uh, Totila, his son, nothing's known about his life or, or his rule. No written records have survived. Um, Roger of Wendover, again, sort of just records, basically records the, his, his reign um, and says that he had two sons, Radwald and Eni. Again, he's presumed to have been a pagan, but again, you know, they're, they're, whether he existed or not, there's a big, big black cloud around it. There's no evidence. The first person we come to with any evidence uh, of existence is Radwald. And he's, he is covered uh, in all of the usual suspects uh, documentation in, in, in their books. Um, but again, the, the, the mainstream have got to get out there because yeah, precise and fuller details of his reign are scarce because the Viking incursions of the ninth century destroyed all the monastic records where all of his records, they believe, were held. Um, yeah, so that's a, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice get out, you know. So all the records were there, but we lost them. Um, um, and, and we should try that, that with British it, history sometime. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> So he's believed to have reigned from 599 until his death in 624. And the important thing with him is that he's, he was supposed to have been a, a Brettwalder, which means he was a, a Britain ruler or a wider ruler. It's a bit like, a, you know, like in Wales, you had all of the, the smaller kingdoms and they would all unite under, under a bigger king. Under a Pendragon or something, yeah. yeah. Pendragon at the time, you know, in times of war or in times of turmoil or trouble. He was believed, and again, inverted commas, he was believed to be one of those. And, and that, that's why I think all focus is on him. He, he's the only person they can finger in this, this list of 7th century kings in, in, in East Anglia who has got any real status. You know, he was a big man, no doubt about it. Uh, he, he they, you know, as, as we said, he, he got uh, Christianized in 604 AD down, down in Kent. Um, and then he had this argument with his wife, so he compromised. Um, the, the, the big story about Radwell is that um, um, Edwin, uh, a northern prince, uh, come and sought his help because he'd been, his family had uh, lands and his family had been killed in battle uh, by King Arthurfrith of Northumbria. And Atherith off, offered, uh, so Edwin came, came to Radwell and, uh, and Radwell was sheltering him. Atherith did, as, I, as they did in those days, I suppose, offered Radwell large amounts of money to turn him over. And uh, it was Penders, uh, and it was Radwell's wife who, who actually sort of said, no, you can't do that, and persuaded Radwell not to hand him over. Radwell then and Edwin then grouped together Got, got a couple of lads, went up to um, Northumbria, uh, killed King Arthurith, and um, King Ed, uh, Edwin was then appointed King of Northumbria. That's one way uh, of refusing an offer, isn't it? Yeah, no, so uh, this was all at the Battle of the River Idol around about six, 616 AD. And, um, you yeah, know, so Edwin was then, you know, he got Christianized as a result of Rad Radwell, so, it, is, that's the start of when Northumbria really started to become Christianized. Well, Roman style Christian, of course. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yes, yes, yeah, you, you're quite right there as well. Yeah, yes. Earlier Christianity, wouldn't they? But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you are, you, you already had Christianity up there through through the monks, and you know, you had Lindisfarne and places like that. Well, British Christianity, I mean, if it was uh, 
related to the Cumbria and the Cumbria and all that kind of thing. It's going way before. Well, if, but anyway, that's another story, isn't it? If you look at Radwald in the Oxford Dictionary National Biography, as I did, uh, it's got this nice statement. It has been <laughs> argued more strongly than convincingly that Radwald must be the man buried in Mount One at Sutton Hoo. This is one of my favourite quotes from a dictionary ever. Yeah. More strongly uh, than convincingly. I love that. Yeah. It's, <laughs> so, yeah. Although, Quality although he, comment, that is. Although he's being pushed into the frame, um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's not a convincing argument. No matter how loud you um, shout, it's still not what might not be right. Yes, it's a very good way of putting it. Exactly. Um, how Radwell died, um, I couldn't find out that, you know, whether he died in battle or whether he died naturally. There, there doesn't seem to be any evidence there because, of course, it all got lost when the Vikings took it all. So. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, he was succeeded by Erpwald, his uh, son. Um, but he was only in place for a very short time. Uh, a couple of years because he got assassinated by a guy called Rickbert, who was a pagan. And it seems to me that, you know, this was a political um, backlash, you know, so uh, the, the pagan side of the uh, pagan side of the uh, the natives at that point there. Um, so getting up and saying, you know, we don't want to be Christians. And, you know, they got rid of Erpwald, who was a Christian through his father. Um, so... Uh, he was the first English king to suffer death as a result of his Christian faith and was venerated as a saint and a martyr as a result of it. Now, I've, I've not heard too much about that side of it, so it's something at some point in time I will look into. So it's argued that Erpwald may be the man buried in, in Mount Two Boat. Then we got Sigmert, who, who succeeded Erpwald. He was another son of Radwald, but again, he had a very short reign because he was, he was a pagan. Uh, but he abdicated in favour of Egret because he went off then to a Christian, uh, he got converted and went off to a monastery at Bury St Edmunds. It's a great story, this guy, isn't he? Yeah, and then, then uh, well, whilst um, Egret then was, was king, uh, Pender of Mercia was attacking the, the Angles. And so Egret appealed to Sigbert to come and lead them because apparently um, Sigbert was a battle was the better warrior you know he, in his youth he was he was quite a man with the with the sword and the shield apparently mm, mm. Uh, but being a christian he refused to participate so at knife point he was dragged from the monastery and taken to the battlefield but he refused to bear arms and was subsequently slain as was sigbert um so one of those stories, yeah. This uh, yeah, a bit harsh, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's you know that, that, that that's good. You know, I'm a Christian. You know, so take me to the battlefield at night. Point. I ain't going to do anything. I just stand there, but killed by the first, you know, sword blow. Um, yeah, yeah. You you've got to have some belief to actually do that. I mean, you have, yes. Uh, yeah, certainly. I would. I, I wouldn't be in that category. You know, no matter what my beliefs, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to fight. You know, I'm, I'm not going to just stand there and let you kill me. Yeah, well, like Saint Edmund's supposed to be there. If, if yeah, the Vikings were to have tied into a tree and said, "If your God can save you, then let's see how this goes," and then fire yeah. arrows at him. And of course, he died from the arrows. Yeah, but uh, there we go. But um, Egret then was, uh, yeah, another potential candidate. Uh, he was a kinsman of Sigbert, and, uh, you know, and he was he was reigning. It seems at the same time as, as Sigbert. You know, there was like a dual um, kingship at that point. But he was killed in the same battle as Sigbert. Again, these guys, you know, only lasted a couple of years. The next big king, you know, in terms of you know the length of his reign and his status. You know, was Anna, King Anna. He, he was the son of Redwall's younger brother, uh, reigned from 637 to 654 AD. And he was praised in Bede's um, writings uh, for his devotion to Christianity. So he was a big Christian, uh, he and his wife. Um, they were again attacked by Penda, the Mercians, who defeated Anna in battle and drove him into exile. Um, he returned to East Anglia around 654 uh, to ha have a bit of a fight again. They, they met at the Battle of Bull Camp in Suffolk, where both um, Anna and his son Jermyn were slain. And Blytheburg is believed to be the location of their tombs and uh, at the church there of Anna and his, son, uh, and his son. So they were Christians, and it looks like their birthplace is... is, is potentially known, you know, so, uh, they, you know, 
there, there could be an argument as to whether they are actually buried, buried in Blackburn or not. But you know, yeah, from Western all, Shropshire from is an interesting place to end up, isn't it? Uh, well, you, you, you're, you're, you know, you're jumping on to you're jumping and bypassing the Mercian Empire, aren't you? You're, you're going to the other side of it. Yeah, very strange that is. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, you, 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 where, where are where you're going to go for support? You know, you, you can either go north. Uh, where, they, where they'd already had a bit of a set to with the, the Northerners. Uh, Edwin, mm -hmm. by that time, I'm sure, would have been, uh, you know, he would have been dead. Like you said, to go to the whole Mercian kingdom and that, uh, well, shops would have been the, still British. Well, like, what, what, would you? Or would you have got on a boat and gone round there to go and seek their help? You know, oh, you could you, do, yeah. That, then you have to go up through the seven, probably. Anyway, there we go. Yeah. It's, uh, curious, that one. No, but he, he could be trying to do a pincer movement, you know, go around the other side of them, right? If you attack them on, on from that side and we'll do a, you know, a timed attack on the same side from, from our side, yeah. we got them squeezed in the middle. Yeah, you, you, yeah, there's all kinds of scenarios there. And again, we just don't have the details to do it. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, let's go through these other guys. They're not real contenders, are they? Are they a bit late? Uh, no, I mean, we're, 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 well, they're real contenders if you then look at the mainstream dating of the coins. If oh, I see, if they push the coins later. later, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, if you, if you go back and look at the coins, these are the guys which should be in the frame. Uh, you're starting to come into the frame with King Anna, because yeah, the original dating of the coins was 650, later than 650. Yeah. So if you go by the original dating of the coins... You know, that, that then takes it, that leads you to Anna. He's the big guy. He's, he's the one who ruled the longest. He died in 654. So that puts him into that window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Athia, one of the four sons of Eni. Well, we're uh, he, Athelwald, he, yeah. into it. he was a pagan, but converted to Christianity. <laughs> Athelwald, one of the four sons of Eni. He's a, a Christian. And then you end up with Edwulf, um, who reigned from 664 to 713 as a Christian. The ones that, you know, if you look at the mainstream dating of the coins, the ones who go into the seven, you know, into the seven hundreds, like Edwolf, well, they're probably too late. Athelwald, yep. well, he's he's he could be in the frame. Athelwald here, he could be in the frame. Anna could be in the frame, and it's potentially Egret could have been in the frame, if you look at the original six fifty dating. Uh, but you can see, you know, you can see what's happened here is that. What the mainstream are looking for is they're looking for a king. They believe that the, the ship burial has got pagan, i.e. ship burial, that, that's got a paganish tone to it, and Christian associations. The one who fits the bill perfectly, and, and this is like a bit of a police fit up, <laughs> we know it's you. <laughs> we know it's you because... Yeah, you yeah, were a yeah, pagan. Yeah. Not because of direct evidence, but because yeah, yeah, you, you, you were a Christian yeah. and you fit the bill of this, what yeah. we believe to be a hybrid form of burial, a pagan ship burial with Christian goods. And you can see inevitably that, that all of that is going to lead you, whichever way you look, you're always going to be pulled back to, to Redwall because yeah, he fits the bill, as I said. We, Makes a good we story, it. yes. We fitted him up nicely, Gov. You know, uh, yeah, we'll 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 get a prosecution on this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, and that's why I, that, that that you know, uh, I'm not going to say that um, you know, Rupert and the British Museum and all those people who have looked at this, the coin experts and all of that. I'm not going to say that you know they deliberately done that, but subconsciously you can see that it's a nice story. You know, it all it all. Yeah, it can all fit together nicely. Well, it I think that is once, once, you, once you get, I think the problem, and we all have to be aware of this when we're doing stuff, when you get a, an idea in your head yeah. and you pin your colours to a mast, you, uh, there's, there's what they call it, subconscious bias, isn't it? Where you, you just, yeah. Yeah. you start to see the yeah. things you want to see. Yeah. Now, we're all yeah. going to do this to a certain extent, you know, and, you know, I got excited when you said there's a Celtic stag and stuff like this. We all, we're all going to excite about different things. And then um, it doesn't have to be malicious. It, yeah. it, it will be your thinking. It, this is why we have to really you, you, somehow with, with our minds be open to say, well, actually, let's let's always look with fresh eyes if we can. And and, and once you start doing that, you get the tunnel vision. Mm. Anything which doesn't fit it yes. gets pushed to one side and, and put under the carpet. And, and it's not discussed. And certainly when you're pre presenting it to people, you're not going to present, I don't know. Yeah, you know, you're gonna present, yeah, you're gonna present this uh, uh, as a theory backed up by provable facts or provable mm. uh, assumptions or provable uh, you know contentions um 
you, you know, you're not, you, no one's going to go in. I don't, don't think any of these guys would want to go in and say, I don't know who's buried there. Uh, well, this is the strange um, contradiction we've got in ac ac academic work, if you like, or in any kind of research, is that um, you're better off saying, uh, be, if you're confident and, and present with great authority a point of view, and knowing everything carries more weight than someone who, who more honestly says, well, there are parts of this we don't really know. Mm. That should be the more convincing when you think about it. But it's actually the ones that, no, it's definitely this. That's, that's the view that gets the headlines, isn't it? That seems to be the one that yeah, no. comes across as a stronger argument. But, 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 but you also got to look at the academic world. If you don't know, what kind of a professor are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they are under pressure, aren't they? And, and also, you know, the, 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 in order to... This is one of the most spectacular finds ever made in, in this country. Mm. Yeah, well, any country is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's no doubt about it. This this is up there, you know. It, it, it's proved that the Dark Ages were not dark. If it's done nothing else. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, if it's done nothing else, it's proved that it proved that one thing, which is what we've maintained all along. Yeah, we maintain that the Dark Ages were never that dark. Mm. So, so, so it, it, it's a fundamental proof in that. Um, but... If you're going to present this, you need to have them. You, know, you need to sell it to the public, and you've got to present it in, in a nice, nice package. Yeah, but, a nice complete yeah, story with a bow on the top, isn't it? So, thank you for watching this latest instalment in the story behind Sutton Who. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so, as you can see, it, it's increasingly looking like this Radwald has been chosen as a sort of standard bearer, bearer for the mainstream position as he fits this narrative of a transition between paganism and Christianity. And that seems to have led the thinking far more than actually just looking at the evidence and seeing what it presents to us. There are still a few more pieces to go. Uh, on this jigsaw, and you can find some of them very interesting indeed. Uh, we're saving some of the best till last. And if you want to see the full story, uh, click on the playlist, and then you can go right back to the beginning and follow the whole story of Sutton Who, the history of the archaeology, how it was done, how the story's been built, and what we have today. And if you want to see more from Britain's hidden history, you're very welcome to join us and to help us in our research and find out what is really going on with Britain's hidden history. Hello.